Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today's video is based on an idea that was provided to me by my youngest son, Adam. He had seen some things being done with fish that made him cringe. And he told me, he said, Dad, you should put out a video on aquariums and situations that, have, that make you cringe. And so uh, this video is really based on his idea. And I looked around. It wasn't that hard to find some uh, ways of keeping fish that made me cringe. And here are six, six different uh, aquarium setups and uh, ways of keeping fish that make me cringe. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get right, right into it. If you're new to my channel and haven't already done so, be sure to hit that bell and that sub button, that notification bell. Let, let YouTube know that you like the content of the channel. That way they'll recommend the channel to more fish keepers like us. And uh, it's a win-win situation. So uh, let's get into aquariums and fish keeping setups that make me cringe. And uh, I've got six of them here for you. And the first one is... Uh, probably out of a, out of the worst nightmare a fish could have. I mean, I'm not really sure what's going on here. If this is a fish ambulance, um, is this an emotional support fish? Is this a fish torture chamber? Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, all I know is that I've been seeing this pop up in, uh, you know, on Instagram and Twitter and things like that. And uh, unless it really is transferring a fish to a veterinarian, under uh, some kind of controlled setup, uh, please don't carry your fish around like this. Uh, you don't need to walk your fish. Uh, they're perfectly happy in their tank and uh, find a different animal for emotional support that doesn't require uh, water and doesn't react to movement and pounding. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It looks like a pressure chamber or something. <laughs> Anyway, oh, cringe number two, cringe-worthy aquarium number two. Fish kept in things like key fobs, jewelry, earrings. Don't do it. Don't keep a fish in a situation like that where they're going to be jostled around constantly, where oxygen is going to be limited, where feeding and filtration are next to impossible. Uh, I don't know who comes up with these ideas. Uh, somebody who, um, I don't know, the same person who would come up to your dog and kick them and uh, don't do it. Don't do it. And uh, if you see it, speak up and <laughs> very inhumane. All right. Cringe, cringe number three, cringe worthy fish keeping idea number three. Keeping fish inside of some fashion, uh, like a shoe. Um, you know, I, I saw this back in the 80s and 90s. People had goldfish in the plastic heel of their shoe. Do, does the fish stay in there till it dies? Do you take it out at night and put it in a tank? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Uh, all I know is that um, the constant movement or tapping must drive these fish absolutely insane. Uh, don't use your fish as a fashion ex accessory. <laughs> you know, no, no cringe-worthy uh, fish-keeping enclosure would be complete without the notorious uh, cramped betta enclosure. People use this fish as a decorative item, as an ornament. They are very beautiful, I understand. At the same time, they are a, something that's alive and probably loves moving around uh, more than two or three inches in any direction without bumping its head. And uh, I don't like when they're displayed in stagnant small cups uh, of stagnant water, no filtration and uh, no aeration. And certainly, I wouldn't suggest doing this for as a desktop desktop item or as a decorative item at your home. Um, if you do have them like this right now, 
consider picking up something like a five gallon, a 10 gallon. I mean, you know, honestly, something, even something like, like this, this is not that expensive. Well, I don't know, what, maybe five gallons? Maybe 10 gallons? Not that expensive at all. And uh, it would be like, uh, it would be like a vacation on a cruise ship for, for a little better like that who's lived his life in a small enclosure. So uh, that's got to be on every cringeworthy list. Number five. Cringeworthy fish enclosure number five. Now, you know, you would think, and I'm not going to say their names because they'll probably block my video, but you'd think folks as knowledgeable about fish would know better than to create um, things like working stereo or audio equipment, uh, instruments, jute boxes, you know, things that are going to be actually uh, boom boxes, things that are actually going to be pounding and uh, vibrating and turning those things into aquariums and then being able to uh, still play the drums or play the stereo or jukebox or boombox. Um, you know, there's a, a, a nerve that runs down the middle of the fish, uh, and I forget the name of it, but it, it tells the fish if a bird has broken the surface to come and eat him or if he's being pursued by something big. Uh, it, it, it's a very sensitive nerve. And uh, these fish, anytime someone taps one of those drums or turns on the boom box or wherever the, whatever you've converted into an aquarium, it's almost like someone firing a gun right next to your ear. It's probably that pleasant. So uh, very cringeworthy. And, uh, you know, I'd say keep, keep the fish in an aquarium that is... Uh, relatively uh, relatively insulated from startling noises, pounding, taps, uh, things of this nature, because uh, your fish probably like it as much as you would if somebody fired a gun right by your ear. You would find it very uncomfortable, and I'm sure they do too. Now, the final cringeworthy. Now, if you've been drinking a lot, this idea is going to appeal to you at some point. Uh, and you've got a lot of extra bottles anyway, so. But you know what? Put those bottles in the recyclables. Uh, dispose of those bottles accordingly. Please do not turn them into a fish enclosure. Impossible to clean without daily water changes. I guess you could drop an air stone into it. I guess you could feed them. They're just not designed for fish. And again, you're, 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 you're giving a fish hardly enough room to even turn around. So uh, I don't know how much vodka I'd have to drink before that would actually uh, appeal to me as an idea. <laughs> oh, boy. If you're doing any of these things or you've done any of these things and I've offended you, um, I'm... I'm uh, I guess, I guess I'm sorry, but I'm kind of not sorry because, you know, it, it, it's in the end, these are living things. They, they should have some, and it's bad enough that they got to live in this enclosed, enclosed, uh, enclosed environment that is subject to pollution and all the other stuff that goes on, ammonia, nitrates and what have you. Anyway, I know if you're watching this video, you're probably not doing this because I think I have a very, very sane uh, and good a group of fish keepers that watch my channel. So with that being said, if you can think of a cringeworthy way of keeping fish that I have forgotten and left off the list, please share it in the comments below. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to hear it, and maybe I'll do a follow-up video, Cringeworthy Aquariums Part 2. So, <laughs> all righty. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in, my friends. I hope to see you on Saturday for Cichlids and Coffee. That's where I get to talk with you on a live basis and answer your questions. And if you're going to Aquashella October, I'm sorry, Aquashella uh, in, in Orlando, uh, coming up next month, 2021, I will be hanging around. Hope to see you there. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you so much, my friends. You are appreciated. Bye-bye.